Thanks to the release of Adobe Aero, creating augmented reality experiences is easier than ever. All you need to start building interactive AR projects is to download the free Adobe Aero app on your phone or tablet. In this video, I will walk you through the whole process of turning a Photoshop composition into an AR scene that feels completely three-dimensional. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and this composition you might be familiar with. I've done a separate video on covering how to create this in Photoshop for iPad app, but now we are in the desktop version of Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to turn this composition into something that we can work with in Adobe Arrow. So the most important thing is that we have to simplify the layer structure. First of all, everything is rasterized in the process of importing a PSD file into Arrow. So if you have smart objects, text layers, vector shapes, they will all be rasterized. I recommend to do the rasterization yourself, but if you want to save time, there is actually a feature here in the file menu under export to export specifically for Arrow. Now this does the job for you, so it's going to do the rasterization, reducing the file size and getting everything ready for Arrow. This is a good feature and it even gives you the option whether you want to flatten completely the file or whether you want to preserve the layers. In case you want to preserve your layers, that means any layer group will be flattened individually. In an AR scene, in an augmented reality scene, you will be able to separate these layers and create a more three-dimensional look. So you will be able to walk around these layers and see more depth in your composition. So that's definitely a good thing. But to be able to do this, I rather do it manually and I walk you through the decisions I'm making in this conversion process. So the first item in my composition on the top is the text layer. I embedded these letters, the smile letters into the composition and created a more unique look, but this would be a little bit too tricky to convert into AR. So I'm actually going to remove the text, the smile I'm going to just turn off and I'm going to keep this happy face text. So I will just delete this other group for now. So you can see that's the one I'm going to keep and this layer group actually will be rasterized into one layer. Now, if I wanted to separate them, I could keep them separately. So maybe the end put on could be a separate layer. In that case, I need to separate it like this and then keep the happy face in a layer group. So if you save your file like this, then these two will be separate. What I'm going to do in this case, although is to select all of this text and using the shortcut command or control E, I'm going to merge them into one raster layer. So this is the best way to prepare it for Arrow, but of course, it's always a good idea to keep and preserve your original layered file, which still has the editable text in case you want to make any changes to it. Moving on, we have this circles layer group, which has this intertwining ring in the center, this golden ring. And although it works well in a 2D format, for Arrow, this needs to be simplified as well. So the main reason I need to simplify this is because the ring has a mask on it. If I turn off the mask, you can see how it looks. And with the mask again, it looks like this. So it creates that depth in my composition, but for augmented reality, it's better to keep it separate and then it will just simply move in the background as a separate object. So in Arrow, you can't really create this interlocking effect between your layers. It's best to separate them. So what I'm going to do here is to delete this layer mask, delete that additional layer on top of it. And then I'm just simply going to put it in the back somewhere around here. And I will just call it ring. The little circles we can keep again, to simplify things, I'm going to merge these layers. I select them with the adjustment layers clipped onto them together and press Command or Control E to merge them. It's also a good idea not to keep any adjustment layers because they will also be rasterized. So it's better to just again do it yourself. And I'm going to put these outside of the group, maybe one in the foreground, another one in the background, and then I'm just going to get rid of this layer group. I'm also going to name these layers so I will double click on this one, type in text. And then if you press tab on the keyboard, you can jump to naming the next layer. I'm going to call this one circle one. 
and then this one can be circle too. Now the shadow can be on a separate layer and it's already a simple raster layer so that's perfect. The background I won't need because I would like to have a clean see-through background or scene within AR so I'm going to simply just delete that and then I have this layer called shapes which I am going to separate as well so we have another circle in there and then I'm going to command or control E merge that layer together so I will call this maybe blob or it could be shape and then we have another circle circle number three and it's important that this layer group called Joker at the moment has three or four separate layer groups inside it. Now if I don't change this Arrow would consider this one layer. So this whole central part here will be considered one layer but that's definitely not what I want. So I'm going to use Command or Control Shift G to get rid of the main layer group and if I kept it like this it would already consider these as separate layers so let's just have a look at what's inside we have the scene which is that other shape in the background I'm actually going to combine that with this joker here on the right so I select these two layer groups combine them with command or control E so that's now one layer and then I'm going to rasterize this layer group by using the same shortcut command or control E and again I will also rasterize or apply the layer mask just to again reduce the complexity and this one here as well apply layer mask so now we have the three jokers separated like this and I can see there is a little bit of issue here so I'm just going to tidy it up because don't forget in AR in augmented reality you will be able to see through these layers so you have to think already in 3D. I think this is perfect this setup. Now one other thing that you need to keep an eye on is the file size so once you save your file make sure it's less than 50 megabytes otherwise first of all it will be too long for it to load into your aero project but it can also crash the app if it's too big and uh, it will be just much easier to work with it if you manage to keep the file size below that 50 megabytes cap so apart from rasterizing your layers and simplifying your composition you can also reduce the image size so if you go into image image size just check what's the actual size I don't think it's necessary to have anything extremely high resolution but something like this around this size it's like an A4 size in print would actually work okay for Arrow. Now it's also suggested by Adobe that you should limit the amount of layers to six but I tested this and you can actually go beyond six so uh, right now we have more than six as well and it actually works fine. This is again just like a guideline you can experiment with it but in a nutshell the simpler you keep your PSD file the better it's going to work in Arrow. So now that this file is ready I would save it and keep it in my creative cloud folder on my desktop which will be accessible through the app which you will see very soon but before we do that I would like to also prepare the word smile as a 3D layer and you will see how this is going to look in Arrow as well so I have this document prepared I just simply have a text layer here and I'm going to go to the 3D menu and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer once that's applied you'll see how it looks in 3D so I can turn this around and first of all I would like to change the color I intentionally wanted to show you this afterwards because luckily you can do it at any time you don't have to go back and undo things to amend this so you just have to have the properties panel open and while this 3D layer is selected click on the text color here and we can choose any color let's just ping something like this now the other thing you have to do to be able to see the changes is to change the lighting in this 3d scene for that all you have to do is to switch to lights here on the top and change the preset from custom to daylights normally I would choose that so now if we go back to the main tab and we select the scene we can start moving around and you can see how it looks maybe one additional thing we can do is to reduce the extrusion depth for that I'm going to select the text itself the smile from the 3d panel and reduce extrusion depth to something around this I think this works quite well 
Now, if you want to do any amends to the text itself, like editing the word or change the kerning, or maybe even apply some warp on the text, you can do this by clicking on Edit Source, which will open up a separate file where you access your text layer. So here we will be able to use Alt or Option, left and right arrows to amend kerning, for example, or we can select it, change the word itself, or even, as I said, by clicking on this icon here on the top, you can add warp effects like maybe an arc. I'm just going to reduce this and maybe add some horizontal distortion as well. Uh, let's just say something like that. If I then accept these changes, I have to save this document because don't forget this is the source file of that 3D text layer. So we just go to File, Save and then close this document and you can see now it's updated in the main document. And if you use the Move tool, you can turn this around, check it out how it looks and if you are happy with it, just make sure you save it as a Photoshop file into again your Creative Cloud folder. And also don't forget, make sure you delete the background layer. Again, best to keep everything transparent. Otherwise, that background layer will also end up in your Aero project. So now if I just go to File, Save As, I can go into Creative Cloud Files and I will save it into Aero somewhere around here. Okay, and now it's time to jump into Aero. So have the app installed on your phone or tablet, open it up and then just simply click on this icon at the bottom to start a new project. Find a good spot and start moving your phone around to capture the scene and Arrow is going to start finding surfaces. Now, depending on the light conditions, it might find it a little bit tricky. The more objects you have around you and the more textures are visible in the surfaces, the faster it's going to find and detect them. So you can see here again, I managed to find this surface and when I tap in the middle, it's going to define it and it's going to be fixed. So now I can easily start working on it. So I'm intentionally working on stairs because obviously I wanted to go with the theme of Joker. Now you can see I'm going to start adding the files that we prepared. Here is the PSD file and I'm positioning it. It will take some time to load but once it's there I can use gestures simply scale up and down to place it in. So once I tapped on the ground now it's already in this 3D environment and I can always scale it up and down. With three fingers you can also drag it up and down so to move it away from the ground or plane level. Once you go into the layers options, once it's selected, there's a feature called Z offset with which you can separate the layers further away from each other. So that can create more of a depth or this, this look that you can see on my phone at the moment. So this is really cool. And the more layers you have, the further away things will get from each other. So once you set this up, you can still reposition the composition, but I think this looks quite good already. So I, as you can see, I'm adjusting the height with the three fingers swipe up and down, but I think this looks quite good. And this is the coolest thing about separating your layers that you can go and look behind them. So it creates a really cool and uh, unique way of interacting with a layered file in augmented reality. So now that we have the main composition, the main Photoshop file in place, we can move on to adding the other file that we prepared with the text saying smile. So I'm going to add this in from the menu at the bottom. Again, go to my Creative Cloud folders, find a file and then open it. Once it comes in, I will be able to place it on the same plane. So there it is. I just tap on the plane somewhere. It doesn't really matter where you start it, but it looks already quite good here. And you can even see the cast shadow from it. So that's also really neat and it looks very natural. But what I would like to do is to have this on the other stair and you don't actually have to create a separate plane for it. You just simply have to use the three finger swipe up and then drag it around until you find it, its space in the 3D environment. So for this, sometimes it's easier to move around with the camera and find the best angle in which you can see what you're doing. So you can see for this specific example, it was easier to see and view the whole thing from above and there I could find the right position for it. And when I'm happy with it, I can just tap away to see it in full 
or I can make any adjustments. But the best way to preview it is to click on preview on the top. So in this mode, you won't see any guidelines or outlines or bounding boxes. This will show you the final result. Here, the drop shadow doesn't work as well, but it's still not too bad. I think the final result is still working quite nicely. So I'm just moving around, checking how it looks. And I think we've done quite a good job with this composition. And here is the final result in landscape format, just to give you a little bit closer look at what we created. Now, we're still just scratching the surface of what's possible with Arrow. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how to create a more complex composition, combining 3D objects with Illustrator files and also some Adobe stock 3D models. But more importantly, we will also see how to add animations and interactivity to AR compositions. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.